How do traumatic brain injuries increase the risk of seizures? When should we give seizure prophylaxis for TBIs? What anticonvulsants are considered for this indication? What's up guys? Mark with PharmWise. I'm a board certified emergency medicine pharmacist that makes clinical pharmacotherapy content on the social medias. Welcome to the Code Blue Debrief, a clinical pharmacotherapy, YouTube, and podcasts, where we discuss emergency medicine and critical care, pharmacology, and disease state management. I post daily infographics, reels, and patient cases. Follow at FarmWise on your favorite platform. I'd appreciate you hit the follow and notification bell for more farm facts deposits in your drug bank. For today's episode, we'll be discussing the pathogenesis of epilepsy in TBIs, considerations and the importance of seizure prophylaxis in addition to guideline recommended anticonvulsants. Post-TBI seizure pathogenesis. One of the dangers associated with TBIs are the development of seizures, which worsen neurologic ischemia and function. We want to maximize better outcomes with the given patient conditions. Let's review the pathogenesis of TBIs and the development of seizures. TBIs have primary and secondary injuries. Primary injuries are the more direct focal injury while secondary injuries are the subsequent edema and cellular damage. There are several different classifications of intracranial hemorrhages depending on the location, including epidural hematomas, subdural hematomas, subarachnoid hemorrhages, and intraventricular hemorrhages. Traumatic brain injuries involve a cascade that eventually lead to neurologic ischemia. With direct and indirect focal injuries, the axon membranes have become damaged. The impaired membrane releases and allows free flow exchange of electrolytes and excitatory neurotransmitters, leading to cellular hypoxia. An environment of lactic acid buildup, blood brain barrier breakdown, and cell death contribute to an inflammatory cascade that worsens neurologic ischemia. Risk factors for post TBI seizures. Risk factors for developing seizures include depressed skull fractures, retained form material, subarachnoid and subdural hemorrhages, and a GCS less than 10. Not every patient who has a TBI needs seizure prophylaxis. It can even be harmful in certain cases. Patients with mild TBIs, defined as a GCS 13 to 15, was not associated with an increased risk of developing epilepsy. Unnecessary prescribing potentially leads to continuation without indication. The timing of prophylaxis is another consideration. Seizure prophylaxis for TBIs is only indicated for early onset, defined as less than or equal to seven days. It is not recommended past seven days deemed as late onset since studies show a lack of benefit with possible increased risk of harm. Anticonvulsants for post-TBI seizures. The Brain Trauma Foundation TBI guidelines recommend either phosphenitoin or levetiracetam for early onset TBI seizure prophylaxis. Phosphenitoin is a sodium channel blocker and is dosed at 17 to 20 milligrams per kilogram. It should be administered at a rate no faster than 150 milligrams of phenytoin equivalents per minute. Compared to levetiracetam, phosphenytoin requires increased monitoring of adverse drug reactions and serum levels. Phosphenytoin inherently is an antiarrhythmic, probably not a good idea with someone with a cardiac history. It can also be hepatotoxic and contains several drug interactions. There has been more recent evidence supporting the use of levetiracetam. The mechanism of action is binding to SB2A and inhibiting presynaptic calcium channels, resulting in reduced neurotransmitter release. With the patient population we're dealing with and limited patient history, levetiracetam is probably the safer option with less toxicities and interactions. Dosing used in studies range anywhere from a flat 500 to 1000 milligrams or weight-based such as 20 milligrams per kilogram. Omen and colleagues evaluated levetiracetam dosing strategies in TBI patients recently. From their study published in April of 2023, it was a retrospective single-center cohort trial from 2013 to 2019. They included patients with a diagnosis of a TBI and received levetiracetam for early TBI seizure prophylaxis. The primary outcome was assessing three different dosing strategies and incidence of seizures. The dosing groups included less than or equal to 1,000 mg per day, 1,500 mg per day, and greater than or equal to 2,000 mg per day. From their analysis that included 866 patients, there was no difference in seizure incidence between the three dosing groups. Interestingly, 
they did observe a lower rate of early onset TBI seizures, death without seizures, and in-hospital mortality in the less than or equal to 1,000 milligrams per day group. However, this was not statistically significant. As mentioned earlier, unnecessary prescribing can lead to continuation without an indication. Dijon et al. completed a single-center retrospective cohort trial in 2020 to evaluate the appropriateness of leptericetum seizure prophylaxis. From their analysis, roughly a quarter of patients continued early onset seizure prophylaxis past seven days and upon discharge. Polypharmacy is already an ongoing problem in medicine. Let's not contribute to more drug-induced complications. Prevent worsening neurologic damage. Post-TBI seizures account for up to 20% of epilepsy cases in the general population. Even with seizure prophylaxis, some studies have reported that up to 53% of patients end up developing chronic epilepsy. The mechanism of post-TBI seizures include glutamate excitotoxicities, neuroinflammation, and autonomic dysregulation. Risk factors for developing post-TBI seizures include depressed skull fractures, retained foreign material, subdural and subarachnoid hemorrhages, and a GCS less than 10. Not every patient is going to need a seizure prophylaxis, and it's only indicated for early onset. Fosfenitoin and levetiracetam are guideline recommended anticonvulsants for seizure prophylaxis. Let me know in the comments below, what's your preference on levetiracetam dosing for seizure prophylaxis in the setting of TBIs? For more farm facts deposits in your drug bank, check out one of these two videos, share my page with a friend, and I hope you learned something new.